Welcome back to the Femria K9 Training Q&A series. And in this series, Joe goes through some of your comments here on YouTube, picks out some of the questions that you guys might be struggling, whether it's training, canine behavior, canine psychology, breed selection, anything at all. And then he's going to ask me, and hopefully we're going to be able to help you. So if you are new here, welcome back to the channel. My name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist, and I'm the founder and CEO here at FemriaCanineLeaders.com. This is Joe, one of our certified canine leaders, and he has found some questions. We're going to ask one today, and hopefully I'll be able to help. I hope so. Um, so, how long can I expect my 10-week-old German Shepherd to stay engaged during home training sessions? Home training sessions? Okay, as opposed to training sessions out in public? Under yeah, distraction. out in the park. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, that, that is one of those questions that... Um, is impossible to answer and it is dependent on the breed which we do have narrowed down to a German Shepherd but then even within that it is just always dependent on the individual and there's a few rules of thumb that I do have here which I think will be really helpful so first of all like I say every breed is different if you're working with a pug an English Mastiff a Bull Mastiff an English Bulldog traditionally quite um, stubborn dog breeds mm -hmm. slower to pick things up not as eager to please not as eager to work those training sessions are going to have to be much shorter to the point of early on at like 10 weeks of age you might be looking at like 30 to 60 seconds genuinely mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. doing lots of little sessions more than trying to do lots of big ones now when you get into breeds like german shepherds belgian malinois labradors golden retrievers you can probably extend that to at 10 weeks five ten minutes it's not unheard of to be able to stretch mm -hmm. into 15 minutes probably wouldn't go much past 15 minutes even if your dog can do that now even within that once you've narrowed down your breed within that breed even within a litter dogs will have different tolerances for more attention span is yeah. what we're looking for as opposed to ability to keep working because we always want it to be a fun engaging experience if you're finding that you're getting frustrated with your puppy you've gone too far you've either you're expecting too much or you've worked for too long if you find that the dog isn't picking things up as quickly again you're expecting too much and you're setting them up for failure we always 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 must set our dogs up for success to then be able to reinforce and reward that success mm -hmm. especially when it comes to obedience work and training sessions so even within a litter there's lots of variables and then even within the exact dog time of day can impact it have they just napped how much exercise have they done are they hungry have they just eaten again this is where kind of common sense comes into it so what i always say is as you do more you will learn if it's shorter amount of time and your friend that has another puppy from the same litter has been able to do twice as much it doesn't matter it's, it's absolutely fine you'll still be able to achieve excellent results just take your time and i always say you want to finish on a high always leave your dog wanting more if your dog can do 10 minutes i would rather you do seven and leave the dog like oh i want to do more i can right. keep going finish on a high make sure you finish on something that's loads of success reward praise and then you make the decision to stop mm -hmm. and end this session so then next time you come back around later in the day to do that session again and the treats come out the training tools come out the dog gets excited they're eager to work builds that relationship and builds that communication mm -hmm. so always use a bit of common sense set your dog up for success take your time patience and finish on a high is there anything that you i guess have like, any so then there's so there's the length of sessions but does it is it a bit of a common sense thing of how your dog's responding to that of how many times you should do it throughout the day so again i in that perfect puppy course i tend to say try and do three or four obedience sessions a day mm -hmm. if you can and what i like to do is always do your obedience sessions it just kind of helps with routine as well so kind of to jog your memory to do it before meal times okay for two reasons first of all it's good routine and it will remind you oh it's time to feed the dog i better do some obedience mm -hmm. first then what you can do is the dog will be hungry so they're more eager to work and they want to work for their food if you can tap into the psychology of a dog wanting to work for its food then straight away you're setting yourself up for high levels of success then you are in control of the food and you are who the dog has to please to get access to that mm -hmm. food which they really want because they're hungry really reinforces that leadership relationship that we're always preaching about so again it's an excellent tool yeah. that you can utilize there and you can just siphon off some of their food so you don't have to go and spend loads of money on fancy treats you can get the bowl out fill their bowl up for the amount of food that you're going to feed them in that meal and then just take a handful 
do five minutes of work, right, okay. excellent, and now it's feeding time. You. And you can just get into that routine. So, and again, naturally, you can do shorter sessions when the puppy's younger, because some puppies you might want to feed three or four times a day. So you can do three or four sessions a day. When they get older, that might mm -hmm. drop to two or three meals. So do two or three sessions, but longer sessions, mm -hmm. because they're getting older and their attention span is growing. Then you can get to that point. I personally like to feed my dogs, my Sully anyway, one meal a day. I know some people, if you're concerned around things like bloat and gastric torsion, want to feed more. I, again, quite like to tap into that mindset of feeding at the end of the day so Sully has to work with me all day uh, to then okay. earn yeah, his meal at the end that, of the day yeah. I like to tap into that um, again it's, it's definitely not mandatory it's just what I like to mm -hmm. do when an adult dog feeding morning and night is very normal and okay so again get up go for your morning walk work your dog come back a bit of obedience then meal time and then mm -hmm. you can do the same again at night and then again by the time and if you make that routine that way you're always working your dog a couple of times a day and even if they've mastered the stuff that you're working on you're still refreshing it mm -hmm. and also constantly building that relationship constantly working on that communication yeah. for the rest of the dog's life that's why i like to do it that way because you can really bake that into your daily routine yeah. of living with your dog so it's the routines just as important for you as well as the dog yeah 100 yeah. percent. because people are busy i get that not mm -hmm. everybody are in a privileged position say like i am where i do this for a living and i can structure my day around training mm -hmm. sessions mm -hmm. this just allows that to drop really nicely because if you've got to feed if you can't feed your dog it's meal times you should not be having a dog mm -hmm. so if you've got time mm -hmm. to feed it you've got time to take two three five minutes mm -hmm. beforehand to work your dog and again it just puts that routine in place um, which just again makes it structured and uh, calm consistent leadership so yeah. that consistency yeah. is so key and this is just a little hack a little trick that um through the amount of people i've helped helps and know helps people mm -hmm. just to mm -hmm. kind of lean into that a little bit and, th and like i say there's the benefits of them being hungry the benefits of the leadership and relationship it builds but most importantly just allows for routine mm -hmm. amazing cool happy all good awesome so i hope you guys got some helpful little tidbits out of that and uh, fingers crossed you did if you did enjoy it please give us a thumbs up if you want to have your question answered here on the channel comment section down below comment section down below joe will go through them every time we sit and film some of these videos joe will go through pull out some comments if you see a question from somebody else's that you're like that would be a really good question you can give it a thumbs up yeah so like it YouTube, so then it'll raise yeah. it up yeah yeah and then we can go oh, that one's got a lot of likes that'll make a good video people mm -hmm. want to see that again we're here to help you guys support you guys to become high level canine leaders so that you can raise perfect companions so get involved subscribe if you're new and we'll see you on the next episode of the femoral canine training